Fisher with ExploreFinancialFreedom.com. So today I want to talk about taxes, inflation, but most importantly, debt. Please hit the like or subscribe button to help get this video out to more people. Um, the mission of Explore Financial Freedom is to elevate strategies to see people live free, and we truly want to see people live free. Today, like I said, I want to talk about taxes, inflation, and most importantly, debt, and how that plays a role in what we're seeing today. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little story. Uh, when I was a junior in high school, I had a history teacher who used to take pride in telling his students that he believed in the KISS method. And the KISS method uh, stood for Keep It Simple Stupid. And for some reason, that idea has always uh, stuck with me throughout the years. And really, my goal uh, when I got into financial education was to model that philosophy of keep it simple, stupid. I see myself as someone who's trying to do that. I want to take complex ideas and make them so simple that everyone can understand and everyone can benefit from those ideas. And so I started thinking, I've been, and I've been thinking about this for a while now, about talking about uh, the debt ceiling and how debt has played uh, a huge role in the financial and political landscape that we're seeing. But with the complexity of the issue, I wondered, I'm like, how can I simplify this message to the point where people understand it? And for a while, I, I really tried to stay away from it, but I began to realize, you know what, this is such an important topic, and I'm getting so many people asking me about it, it's really time to talk about it. Um, so today, I want to talk about how debt plays a role. If you turn on the news... Um, in any news station, I don't care if it's CNN, Fox, MSNBC, any of them, you're probably hearing about the debate of the debt ceiling. I don't really know if I'd call it a debate, um, as politics is mostly theatrics, but it's definitely being portrayed as such. The questions that I really want to ask, though, today or answer are, what is the debt ceiling? Why is it so important to so many people, and what are my thoughts on them? And that that last one might surprise a lot of people. But let's start with what is the debt ceiling, all right? So the debt ceiling is essentially this. The U.S. government deals in debt. Actually, if you look at it over the last 50 years, um, the U.S. government has taken on enormous amounts of debt. Now, the U.S. government has always, uh, throughout the centuries, dealt with that. But in the last 50 years alone, you can see enormous debt being taken on. And even in the last three to five years, we've taken on more debt in those last three to five than we have taken the whole history as a nation. Um, there are so many reasons for why, for why the U.S. government has taken on debt. Uh, but the truth is, the entire U.S. system, the current U.S. system, is built upon debt. And so really what the government does is the government determines what the level of debt they want to take on. And so every couple of years, it seems like we're talking about this debt ceiling. Well, what does that mean? It means that the U.S. government has created a legislative gap saying we can't take on any more debt than this. And then they get to that point and they have to talk and debate about what the new legislative gap or where they're going to cap off debt moving forward. And so really what the two party system is doing is not arguing about whether or not they should take on more debt. Oftentimes what they're doing is talking about how much debt they should be taking on. What is the limit? Did you catch that? What is the limit? They're not actually arguing about should we take on debt? but how much more debt we should take on. So why is this important? Why is it important, this whole discussion? Well, there's three ways for governments to fund themselves, okay? One is through taxation. Two is through money printing. And three is through debt. Now, the U.S. government is able to tax people, but ultimately, let's be honest, 
uh, when you look at the federal budget, there is no way, there is absolutely no way that taxes alone are going to fund the current budgets that the federal government is bringing out. It's just not going to happen. So the Federal Reserve can print money, and they do that. Uh, and money printing, in my opinion, is just a hidden tax on people and on the citizens of America. But at the end of the day, money printing results often in inflation. And prices go up. Inflation is painful on the American people. And so then politicians begin to experience the grief of angry citizens experiencing the pains of inflation. So then the third thing they do is they take on more and more debt. Debt becomes something governments use to fund themselves, to fund the budgets. It seems like every couple years, like I said, we hear about the House, the Senate, the White House, um, talking about increasing the debt ceiling. This argument is built around the idea of increasing the debt to allow them to borrow more money to fund their budget, to fund their pet initiatives, no matter the political party. All right. So the U.S. government cannot sustain itself with taxes alone, so they must take on debt. Now, why, what are my thoughts on this? And I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. But what are my thoughts? So my thoughts are this. Governments run on debt. Now, we can argue whether that's good or bad, but they run on debt. It's become such a normal thing that every few years we talk about it. And very few people even begin to question whether debt is good for governments to deal in. Um, because it's become such a part of the normal landscape of politics. Now, I'm currently on uh, my local county board. I have served on my city council. And I don't talk about that a lot here. But I have come to see at every level of government, governments deal in debt. I've been, I've been called a budget hawk in my roles on both the city and the county. And I... I actually take that as kind of a compliment because I want to advocate for the taxpayers. And so oftentimes I ask myself, is taking on this debt good for the taxpayers? Because future generations are going to have to pay for that debt that we're taking on now. And the idea is, is debt good for the taxpayer? Now, that conversation is not happening at least from where I can see, from my vantage point, I don't see that happening at the federal level. However, they are talking about how much debt they should be taking on. That's really the argument. How much debt should they be taking on? Um, I have a very different view uh, of debt maybe than a lot of people. I'm not anti-debt. Now, I want to say that. I'm not anti-debt. I actually think there are times that debt makes a lot of sense, okay? So I really do. I think there's a lot of times that debt makes sense. Um, and I'll give you an example of one of those times. Let's say interest rates are low, and they're, let's say you want to buy a house, buy a business, and you have the money. You have the money in your reserves to buy the house, to buy the business, but you choose, because interest rates are so low, that you know what? Money's cheap right now. I'm going to buy this business or buy this house using debt, knowing that full well I could pay for it on my own because I have the money in the reserves. I will take on the debt, <clears throat> and then over time, I will pay that off. You know, two things. One, there are tax, there are tax incentives for doing that. And two, that's good business. A lot of businesses are doing that. They're not using their reserves. They're taking on debt in order to do that, but they have the reserves in place. Now, the businesses that don't do that, that ultimately are continually taking on debt, taking on debt, do not have the reserves in place, oftentimes are going, they're filing for bankruptcy, or what we also see in the news a lot is if you've heard the term too big to fail, they are too big to fail. Well, the government will come in, save the day because they're just too big to fail. What 
that means is that they are um, they are operating their entire funding out of debt instead of funding out of their reserves. And that's an important distinction. Now, debt has its place, all right? Debt has its place. I think it I think there are times it makes a lot of sense. The problem is the US government is dealing in so much debt that they can't even operate. They cannot even operate without it. They are so, it debt is so part of their funding formula that if you got rid of debt, they're like the business that's filing bankruptcy because they don't have enough money in reserves. That's what we're seeing. So, you know what? You, you might you probably have heard many personal financial guru types tell you that uh, taking on consumer debt in order to live is a dumb idea. And I would agree with that in principle. I think taking on consumer debt in order to live is absolutely ridiculous. It's a very asinine idea. And yet, many, many people do it. And let's be honest, the American government and governments all over this world are doing the same thing. They're taking on debt to live. So this idea of live within your means is something that governments just do not understand. They do not understand the concept of living within your means. So this mindset is so ingrained, ingrained in governments to take on debt in order to operate, in order to survive. So really, in my opinion, governments have ultimately put us in a no-win scenario. They have put us in a place where we just can't win. So what does that mean? There are consequences to our actions. So one, they, one option is they can default on the debt. But if they default on the debt, there's, there's going to be a lot of geopolitical consequences to that decision. Two, they can keep arguing about the debt level, but the, the level of debt is unsustainable. They, are, they have literally built a house of cards that could collapse at any point in time. So they can't win, and they've put the American people in a no-win scenario. So I remember as a child, uh, my mother would often remind me before going to school that my actions have rewards and consequences. Every action, whether we realize it or not, will have a reward or a consequence. And really what the American government has done and governments all over this world have done is they are acting without thinking through the reward and the consequence. And so taking on debt has will have implications. There will be implications to every action we take. There are implications to operating governments off of debt. And so what we are seeing, in my opinion, is the consequences of operating the government off of debt. And so what we're going to see is the dilemma. Do they keep arguing about the debt limit or do they default on the debt? So here's my, my uh, and really that's the million dollar question. What will they do? So here's my thoughts. I think short term, they will keep, they will keep arguing about the debt limit and they will keep arguing about how much to increase the debt limit. I think long term though, long term, I do believe they will default on the debt. That's my theory. I, I could very well be wrong, but I think at some point they will they will default on the debt and there will be geopolitical consequences to that action. The problem is the US government over centuries of borrowing has created a house of cards, as I said, uh, and that house of cards could collapse at any time. I do not believe they have the ability to salvage this situation. It's ultimately become a game, and it's a game they can't win. As I said, politics is so often theatrics. So the public is led to believe that debt is necessary and that we should only be fighting over how much of the debt we how much debt we really take on. My fear is we don't see the true consequences of the continual action of making debt part of the funding formula for governments. There are going to be consequences. It's unsustainable. We have unsustainable levels of debt at every level. Now, I've given you both my short-term and long-term theories. I've also given you a lot of my thoughts um, 
behind the principles of debt. I think in the end, what is to come though is very serious. And I think what's to come will be inevitable. I think the process of how we get there could very well be extremely difficult. I think between debt, taxes, and inflation, um, the American people could enter a season of great financial um, turmoil. Um, I think so much turmoil that it could it could rock the very uh, fabric of our financial system. Uh, I think no matter what happens with the debt ceiling, the house of cards is becoming too large. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong. But I think the house of cards they have built is so large that at any time that house of cards could and quite possibly will collapse. I think we are going to enter the next Great Depression, and I think that Great Depression might be coming sooner than we want to admit. Uh, I know I am getting ready, I'm getting my family ready, and I hope you're doing the same. Please, please, do not, do not miss this opportunity. I think the Great Depression is coming, but I think a lot of people um, can be prepared, and there's ways to get around it. Uh, please check out our website, www.explorefinancialfreedom.com, to learn more about how we can help you elevate strategies to see you live free and explore how to find financial freedom. Thank you for checking out today's video. And again, hit that like and subscribe button so we can get this these videos out to more people. Thank you.